All right, everyone, so how many of you tried to work on what we've done last time, tried to work on it a little bit at home? Okay, good. So what you'll want to do is uh, we're going to set ourselves up again uh, as per the instructions. Remember, you can print these out during the break, but uh, we're going to need to set up a couple of things one last time, and then when we set this up, and then use what's on sheet uh, for, I believe, the duplicator plugin to archive it. So we're going to need to start up WAMP server again. So here on the desktop, you should see it should either be called Start WAMP Server or simply WAMP Server. You want to double click that. And remember, you won't get any pop up on the screen that tells you, Congratulations, you've got WAMP. What you're going to see, hopefully, is on the bottom right corner. If you don't see it, you want to click on the double arrow, and you'll see, hopefully, a green W. If you see the green W, that means that you've started a WAMP server, and it's ready to work. If it didn't turn uh, green, if it's still red, then I've got some steps for you to follow. Uh, but did anyone not to get green there? Is it inside the double arrow? So is is it inside? No. Nope. Okay. Did you double click the start when? Did you check if it's in the bottom right corner where the double arrow is at? The green one? All right, so I'm just saying that, remember, you don't get a big pop-up screen that shows you, welcome to WAMP. It just, it just happens. If we do want to see the WAMP screen, uh, go over to the little W, and then let's click on it, and then at the top we'll select localhost. So select localhost and the, and the default web browser should pop open to show you the home page. All right, so I've got my WAMP home screen here. Uh, we're going to need to create a database like we did last time. So this is going to be on sheet number two. <clears throat> sheet number two. Step number two. So here on our uh, on our WAMP server screen, we're going to select the PHP My Admin down here on Tools. When we get to the PHP My Admin screen, then we will select Databases at the top. I would just ignore it for the moment. I think it's going to work out. Okay. Uh, so then under databases, we're going to create a database right here, and we're going to call this WordPress, lowercase, no spaces. Type WordPress there and select to create. When you create, you should get a little pop-up that says Database WordPress, WordPress has been created. And if it went away before you noticed, take a look on the left side and you should see this is a list of all your databases and you should see one called WordPress. So if it worked, there it is. If it didn't, then again, type it in and press Create. But if you see it here, then it worked. So we need that database there. Then we're going to... Um, then we're going to install um, WordPress, the WordPress software. And again, we did this last week, and yes, everything erases once you restart these computers. We're going to do it one more time, and then at the end of the day, we'll actually be able to save our work this time. So 
let's minimize the windows and go to the desktop. Go to the desktop, and then we're going to open the computer window. Go to computer. You'll see the local disk C. Open local disk C. And then scroll down and scroll down and you'll see a folder called WordPress. Open that WordPress folder. And then inside of there, you'll see the WordPress 3.9.1 software. At the moment, uh, version 4.0 is available, so we don't have the latest version, but we're not going to bother updating just yet. It's too new. We don't know if all the bugs have been worked out, so once we set this up and it tells us, why don't you upgrade to 4.0? You want to ignore that. So when you find this folder, you're going to right-click it and select Copy. So this WordPress 3.9.1 folder, we're going to copy it and then press back. Back to the local disk C and then open this WAMP folder. Uh, open the WAMP folder and then open the www folder and then once you see this screen that's got a uh, fave icon and index and such that's where you're going to right click and paste So it's going to take a moment to copy the WordPress software from the other folder into this folder. And you'll know that it worked because now you have a folder that says WordPress 391 inside of this www folder. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Is any folder is WordPress 391? Mm -hmm. So once we copy uh, WordPress in here, uh, now the software is ready to be installed, but I would recommend let's change the name of our folder here. Uh, let's simplify it to say just WordPress. So when you've copied WordPress 391, you can right-click Rename. And then once you see that, just uh, change it to WordPress. Question? Is there a typical time to wait when they update the software for WordPress? You mean for us to update? Well, just in general, like the workbook is at 4.0. There, there's, there's a timetable that they go by, which I never pay attention to. Uh, but on the website, WordPress.org, they, they tell you when the software is being released. So for myself, I would say it's not that there's a timeline. It's that, there, that we need to get informed about what the changes will be. So if we don't know what the changes are, we might not want to update yet until we read what they are, until we read blogs that say, okay, this update is good, but actually don't update unless you've got this. Right. So I, I can't give you a straight answer about when to update on a schedule. It's we need to get informed. That's why I'm saying let's not update just yet. What's that? Whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, if you feel that you've gotten to an intermediate level or an advanced level, you'll definitely be able to make that decision. If you're still on basic, I would just wait few, a few weeks. All right, so once you see the WordPress folder in the WW folder, we'll go back to the web browser. And on the web browser, we will uh, go to the address localhost. Remember, localhost should always take you back to the home screen, the WAMP screen. It's not localhost.com. You can type the HTTP part if you want, but we'll go back to the address localhost.
And so when we're back on localhost now, we should see at the bottom where it says your projects, we should see that it lists our current project, WordPress. All right, if, it's, if you see that it says WordPress at the bottom, now on the address, we'll go to localhost slash WordPress. We saw this last week. We need to install the software. So click the create a configuration file. It tells you what you need. That's fine. Let's click let's go. Okay, well, let's try typing http colon slash slash localhost. Did that take you back to localhost? Right, did that go back properly? Okay, so once you're on localhost, then we'll go to localhost slash WordPress. So then when we're on localhost slash WordPress, we'll click create a configuration file. Okay, just a moment. I'll, I'll help you in a moment. So, uh, can you be a little quieter, please? I'll, I'll help you in a moment, but if you're going to help, please be a little quieter. So, uh, here we're going to select the Let's Go. And we should fill this in here where we can uh, connect up the database. So, we just created a database called WordPress. Uh, that's good, so we'll leave that name there. Uh, username, as per my notes here, we're going to type root. And then password will be empty. So I'm looking at instructions uh, number uh, sheet number two, number three. So WordPress username root password is empty, and then submit. Sure, it's, it's, it should say run the install. And again, we're going to create our site. Uh, we can make up a site. We can use the, our existing site. I'm going to create a, a site called Victor's Bakery. So so then under username, this is the, the name that I'm going to use to log into the site with. This is different than what we had a moment ago with admin. That admin was only there, or the root I mean, the root was only there to work with the database directly. We're not going to work with the database directly. This is our login to WordPress. So this can be whatever you want. My, uh, my notes here say that you could write admin and then make up a password. Add your email because if you uh, if you lose your password, you could try to retrieve it. And since we're not running on a real live server on the internet, I'm going to turn off allow search engines to index this site. That's just basically saying don't let the search engines pay attention to our site because it's not a real site that's on the internet. It's not going to find it on your computer. Question? Okay, I'll check you out in a moment. You need to make sure that the database that you're connecting to is the one that you created a moment ago. So I'll help you in a moment. We're going to select Install WordPress. Okay, I'll help you in a moment. So you want to select Install WordPress, and then if it worked, you're going to get a success message. 
with reminding you with your ad, uh, with your username, which we called admin, which is in my notes. And then the password, it's the one you chose. I don't know your password, so make sure you write that down. And believe it or not, people forget their password from 30 seconds to 30 seconds. So write that down. I'm going to log in. So you're going to log in and you're going to see your WordPress dashboard and if you got to that point very good, raise your hand. So I have a couple of you that need to help. Remember, I'm going to record all of these lectures. You'll be able to watch them over and over. I do recommend you do. So that you're up to speed. You can put your um, your email on it. But I should be. I mean, does she put her website on this screen or is it the next one? Um, she did the configuration. Leave word leave that here, right group. And then nothing for us to do. Group, lowercase. R O N P O R O P. Next line, nothing for us. Nothing. Run the install. Yes, thank you. 
Okay, now you can put the name of your website and your user will be added. Whatever site you want to work on. Whatever you want it to be. You can do Victor's Bakery if you don't have anything else, but if you have your own thing, then just put your own thing. So you can put whatever. It's going to be your project, so if you don't want to do a bakery, then just pick something you like. Admin. And then do your password. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about that. Just do it. Just do it. All right, so we did this before, um, and we need to do it again today because remember, it erases everything. But at the end of the day, we'll be able to take it home with us. All right, so when we get to this screen, we have logged into the, the WordPress dashboard. And now what we're going to do, remember, um, we're, we're going to, um, last time we had explored a little bit of plugins and such.
not plugins, I mean themes, where we can change themes. We'll do that later. We already did it last time. Check the video. What we're going to do today is, um, is work with the, um, uh, the difference between posts and pages. So if we look at the, if you go to the top left corner and select visit site, so you can see what the site looks like, visit site, you'll see that there it is and there's a hello world message. And then at the top right corner something says sample page. What we're looking at in this screen are two different things, posts and pages. Now WordPress was originally invented as a blog software. A blog is a kind of a website where content is published on a regular basis. So it could be there's a new blog post every day, or every week, or every month, or every quarter. Some sort of regular basis that someone posts a new blog post. An example, just for your information, is over on my website, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. On whatever regular basis we've decided on, something new is going to be published. It's going to show uh, an article about using Google+, Plus or an article about using Twitter, or an article about passwords, but on some sort of schedule with some sort of date. That's what traditionally a blog is. And WordPress was invented to make this kind of website easy to, to create. So the default WordPress that we just installed is a little bit more set up like that. That uh, when people go to your home page, this is what they'll see. Hello world. They'll see then, uh, you know, uh, how to use Twitter. And then they'll see how to bake a cake. And they'll see whatever you post on a regular basis. That's the default. Uh, my home page of my site is that the blog is not the most visible thing, perhaps. There is a blog section down here, but there are other things on, on the site. There's this banner that catches your attention and the different sections and so forth. Let me show you another example. This client, client of mine, uh, also has a WordPress site, but they don't have any blog feature at all on their site. They chose not to create blog content, or that is, they didn't hire us to create blog content. So on the front page is an eye-catching slideshow, and then the most important information, the phone number and the restaurant hours and that sort of thing. So this is also WordPress, but notice the home page is not a blog. So we'll talk about setting up your site either like a blog or like a static home page. Static in that the home page doesn't change every time you post something new. My personal blog, that one is set up purely as a blog in that you log into the home page of it and right away it's got blog posts that you can read about the latest things that I'm writing about. So uh, I'm into comic books, I have a comic book collection and I write about comics. And on a regular basis, I publish something, and it goes right to the home page. So these are the two extremes. Having a website that is purely blog content on the home page, that something new appears every whatever time you publish, or that you have a static home page that doesn't change, um, but you might have a subsection somewhere that is the blog. That's kind of then in the middle what my home page is. There's static content, but whenever a new blog post appears, it will appear down here. So you have to decide which of those two you want, and we'll look at how to do that a little bit later. But does that make sense? There's a static blog homepage, uh, there's a static site homepage versus the blog homepage. So the difference is in the dashboard, we've got a section that says posts and a section that says pages. This is the difference. Posts are the part of the blog that is published on a regular basis. If you create a new post, you're adding to the blog. If you create a new page, 
it looks better like this. Notice at the top of this site, you've got home, services, about, portfolio, etc. Those are pages. Oftentimes a page is part of the menu, and it's something that does not change on a regular basis. How many times are we going to update the contact unless we, knew, we move to a new building or get an e a different email? So pages in WordPress are specifically screens of content that do not change on a regular basis. And posts then are pages, screens, that is, screens that change on a regular basis, like this. So we're going to create one of each in a moment. Make sure you're back on the WordPress dashboard. If you don't see dashboard, remember you can always switch back and forth, back on the name there, go back to dashboard. Let's go over to the posts section and click posts. We have one by default, Hello World. Everyone gets that one. Uh, the Hello World is the very first post. Let's say we no longer want this post. If you hover your mouse over it, you should get some menu items. Which one do you think we want here? Trash. trash. So hover over Hello World and click on Trash. Now the good thing about WordPress is that if you trash something, it doesn't go away forever. It actually gets moved to a new little section called trash. So you can retrieve it in case you accidentally deleted something. And I believe it stays there forever until you empty the trash. I have to look it up, but uh, they, if they do, if they do auto-delete it, I'm sure it's several weeks. So if you, if you remember tomorrow, whoops, I shouldn't have deleted that. You can, you should be able to go back to it. But anyway, we've trashed something. We have no posts. So if we were back to go back to the home page, don't do it. But if we were to go to the home page, it's empty. See, whenever you have a post, it goes to the home page by default. So let's create a new a new post. On this screen here, how do you think you create a brand new post? Add new. So near the top here under post, you can click add new. And we have this screen with a lot of things to fill out, most of them optional. So first, the title here. Here's the example from my blog post. So on my blog, so I write about comics and Comic Con and all of that. So uh, the title of this one is San Diego Comic Con 2014. The title of this one is Cool Comic Book Covers, Johnny Quest number 16. This one is Cool Comic Book Covers, Secret Wars number 8. So that's the title that it's asking for right here. What's the title of this post? Depending on your website, think about it for a moment. Mine's Victor's Bakery. I'm going to say something like, uh, this is going to be uh, my post that welcomes everyone to our newly opened location, let's say. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll say a uh, new uh, Chula Vista location. and then click inside this editing box here. So that's the title that will appear at the top of the post. It automatically, if you noticed, created a link right there. In my case, is localhost slash WordPress slash question P equals 5. If yours says equals 6 or 2 or 1, don't worry. But this is, this is the database in action. Everything that we post to Everything that we create in WordPress is basically saved to the database we created back on an earlier step. And this blog post exists as a little reference in the database of number five. So as we add more content, they're all going to have some sort of number. We don't need to worry about that. Later on, we'll talk about making a pretty link. Because right now, this is the link to this post, P5. I wanted it instead to be, you know, victorsbakery.com slash new location. Right? A meaningful name. And we can change that, but a little later. Let's add some content here. Uh, just make something up. I'll say um, we're pleased to open our newest location in 123 Fake Street, Chula Vista. California. 
I want, I want three. Stop by and um, say cookie to get a free cookie. So this is a little uh, word processor, like Word or um, Pages or anything that you're used to writing with. So that means we have a little bit of styling ability right here. We can select a word, cookie for example, and then select bold. Now it's bold. So you've got bold, you've got italics, strike through, bullet points. You've got a few basic word processing tools. Very much more limited than Word, right? Well, at the very end, on the right side, you want to remember to turn on this option here, toggle, toolbar toggle. This will give you another row with a little bit more styling, styling features. So turn on that one. A few versions ago, this little button used to be called the kitchen sink because of the expression, everything in the kitchen sink. And I remember uh, I was teaching a class and I said, okay, everyone, turn on your kitchen sink button. Everyone was like, what is the kitchen sink button? Because they had changed it to the toolbar toggle. But uh, anyway, turn on your toolbar toggle. And you've got a couple of options here. Uh, you can do underline. You can, oh, text color. That's where I can change my text color, right here. So you want to select something just like any word processor, and then you can edit it. You can even put special symbols. There's your undo button. Undo, redo. You've got a little styling here with paragraphs and headings and such. Where's the font type? Where is what? The font type. There is no font. That's one of the limitations. There's no font exactly, but what we could do is something like this where we write something and then under this where it says paragraph we have a little bit of styling here not to change font but to change styling sizes and such we're going to see that we have other ways to add um, to add to add fonts so you would think well that's weird that it's not built in that we can change fonts um, the thing is that for a long time fonts were a problem on the web because in the old days we would have to design our text in a different way for it to have the font that we envisioned and it really took a long time for fonts to really work on the web so even now it still doesn't quite show to choose a font we have to add a plugin this plugin will then give us access to more fonts So we can um, add colors, bolding, italics. We have these styling features which I recommend we use because WordPress has a lot of built-in search engine optimization features, SEO. Let's say we design our site and it's really nice, but no one knows about it. So when someone does a search and you don't appear, let's say someone searches for bakeries in Chula Vista. My site is about a bakery in Chula Vista, but it doesn't appear on the first page of Google results because it has not been optimized for the search engines. Well, I teach a class on search engine optimization where we go in, in detail about that stuff. But WordPress has a lot of built-in features for SEO, search engine optimization, and, and honestly, one of the best things, one of the easiest things you can do is take advantage of this stuff about styling right here. Not the colors and the and the underline and stuff, but what's in that little box there. This, the search engines love this. The search engines love that you mark sections of your document with headings, paragraph, address, etc. They like that you've given meaning to your content because if you just look at this from a distance, this is a bunch of text, but notice that I've marked headings here, the troubleshooting section the setting up section. I've given it a meaning. If you need to know about troubleshooting, you jump to this section here, 
and you get the info that you want. If you want to learn how to set it up, you jump to the section of Setup. So we can do this in WordPress by simply selecting text and giving it a, a heading. And we've got different, different sizes. And then the search engines analyze your site and see this person knows what they're doing. They're using headings. They're using proper formatting and, and um, organization of the site. Let's put them higher up because they're a good site compared to everyone else that just uses WordPress and doesn't do the right techniques. And it's simply using these, uh, these style style um, selectors. So we can write more stuff here, but let's look at what else we've got on this screen. Uh, how many of you know how many of you know any uh, HTML code? A few of you. So the question about fonts and such, if you know how to write how to write code to change the font, lucky you because here on the top right corner we've got the visual editor and then we've got the text editor click on text, which I think they should call the code editor, that changes over to show here's the code. So if I know HTML, I can write any HTML or CSS here. So this is not a class where we're going to write a lot of code. Once in a while we might. There's other classes where you'll learn that. Look at that. There is no option in the code in the in the visual editor to make a background color. But if you know some CSS, some HTML, you'll be able to to do it. Question. Does that your your SEO? No, colors don't really play any any point in SEO. So would you like to learn one little quick HTML code to do something like that? Sure. All right, so let me show you how I did this. Let me backspace, actually. There we go. So here's what we can do. On your visual editor, make sure you switch to the text editor, the code editor. It should look like this. There's some HTML tags here and there. Here's what we'll do. Um, I want to make this part, let's say, stop by and say cookie. I want that part to be with a different background color. So before that sentence, on the line before it, if you don't have a line, press enter to make a line. But we're going to type this. We're going to type the, the less than symbol, which is shift comma. Right, you get the less than, angle bracket. And then div, short for division and then the greater than, shift, period. DIV, this is an HTML tag, it's HTML code. HTML is the code that powers all the websites, basically. And we're saying we're going to divide this section from other sections, and we're going to put a background color. So HTML works with pairs of tags. Notice here, h4, welcome, slash h4. So from here to here, we've marked this as a heading number four. That's what I did up on the visual editor. I selected heading four, and it wrote the code h4 slash h4, open and closing tags. We need an opening div tag and a closing tag so that it knows where to start the background color and where to end the background color. So above or right after your sentence that you want to mark, press enter and give yourself a space, and this time we're going to write the same thing, uh, the less than symbol, slash div greater than. Very important, I have a slash there. Start the div, end the div. Start the h4, end the h4. You might see other things. Start this em, end the em. That's HTML, hypertext markup language. We're marking between this and this do that. So if we write this starting and ending div, we've divided this from the rest of the content, and now we're going to style it. We're going to say anything inside of this division, give it this background color. So go back to where you wrote div, 
right after the V before the angle bracket, right after the V and press space. So make sure you've got the space right after the div, the word div, but before the angle bracket. And we'll write style, S-T-Y-L-E, style. The equals symbol, which is next to backspace. The quote symbol, which is shift apost apostrophe, which is next to enter. So shift apostrophe, which is quote. That's an opening quote. And then close the quote, so quote again. I've got two quotes, open quote, end quote. In between the quotes, finally, now we can say background color is pink, like this. Background dash, the little minus sign, dash, color. colon, which is shift semicolon, which is next to the L, shift semicolon, write a colon, space, and then here we can pick just about any color, pink, yellow, blue, purple, I'm going to try purple, and then semicolon. All right, so check that you wrote it exactly like I did, and once you've typed that, Switch back to the visual editor. Hopefully then you get a line there that is purple. <coughs> purple. So, um, that's the tip of the iceberg of HTML. It's obviously much more complicated than that. Raise your hand if it worked. Okay, so if it didn't, check your spelling again, but notice we have to write it exactly like this. So that's why this text is hidden. That's why this text is hidden. It's not readily available for you unless you go looking for it, because most of us will never want to touch this. This is not something that most of us want to learn. We want to press a button and then it's purple. Well, all of that happens behind the scenes with code. So if you have experience with code, you will be able to, uh, to write some code. So we'll do a little bit more, then we'll take a break. I'm going to go back to the visual editor. If it doesn't look quite right, that's OK. Maybe purple is too dark. Maybe pink or yellow or something, but that's that's fine for the moment. You can always go back and change from purple to pink if you spell it right. There it is. Okay, let's look at what else we've got on this screen. Don't click it yet, but we've got a button that says publish. The thing about WordPress is if we make changes and publish, then that means that they're visible for everyone to see. So one of the drawbacks of working with WordPress is that your content could be live sooner than you expect. If you're working on uh, Dreamweaver, for example, you do your work, you spend all day doing your work, and then you upload, and then it's live. On WordPress, as soon as you click publish, it's live. So if you didn't intend it to, everyone will see what you've done. We have the option to save a draft, however. And this draft is being saved in WordPress up on, the, up on the server, in the cloud. So let's click Save Draft. And after you've saved draft, draft one time, it should then auto-save itself every five minutes or so, I believe. So that's useful. Question? I don't have the draft. All I have is preview change. OK, don't worry about that just yet. Uh, what, do you have a button that says Publish? Yeah. OK, don't worry then. Um, did you go back to the visual editor? Yeah. All right, so don't quite worry about it. We'll publish in a moment. If you do see the draft, save draft. But if you don't, we'll publish in a moment. Below that little box, 
there's a bunch of uh, status and all of that, which we'll talk about a little later, which will make sense more. But below that, we've got a section that says format. Depending on your theme, you may have more than one format. So here it's a standard. It's going to look like a standard blog post. And we have posts or pages that will work better if you've got a video, for example. The layout will change to show you a video a little more efficiently. If we've got a gallery of pictures, we can select gallery. Um, what you can do is select one of these options and select preview. I've got it on standard. I'm going to select preview. A new window will pop up to show you this is how it could look once you finally publish. Notice it opened a new tab for me, so switch back to the previous tab if you did preview. Right, two tabs. And if you want, you can say, well, how would this look if it was, I don't know, if this was a gallery? I'll select gallery and preview. Not too much difference, probably because I don't have pictures. Okay, if I select a side, I definitely see a difference. If I select a side, I don't see the title anymore. I see my content, and it's a lot more indented also. What about quote? Not too much different. Uh, I guess I don't see the title again, but I, I then see a quote mark there. So depending on the theme, these might actually look really different. I'll put it back on standard. Uh, depending on your theme, it might look really different or it might not. This is how you can see the results because what you edit, how you're editing it here, won't look exactly what your final result will be because your theme is not applied until you publish or preview. Or go back to standard. We've got a section below formats called categories. This is, again, another thing that really helps your SEO organization. You might have a hundred pages on your site, and if you do not organize them, the search engines have a harder time dealing with your site, and then when someone searches bakeries in Chula Vista, you might not be found. An organization in, in, in WordPress takes a variety of formats. This is one of them organizing by categories your posts or your pages. So let's think about this. If I'm selling baked goods, in general, you tell me what type of baked goods exist. Pastries, sure. cakes, cookies, pies. A pie is technically different than a cake. Breads, etc. So I've got some categories that I can use. Think about what categories will divide up will organize your site. So I'm giving the example of my bakery. Um, think about perhaps what products you're selling or what content you're publishing. Let's say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tech blogger. I'm going to be writing about technology. Well, categories that I could create are Apple products, Windows products, um, smartphones, tablets, right? general categories for whatever I create. So you'll have to figure out what categories you need. In my case, it's my bakery, so I'm going to have some categories of cakes and pies. This one doesn't fit into any of that, not really. Um, I did mention about getting a cookie, but this is more of an announcement. That could be a category. So I'm going to create a category here. All, cat all pages and posts automatically have the uncategorized category. Not useful. You want to change it as soon as possible. Here's how. Under Categories, Click the plus add new category. It gives you a little spot here. Okay, what would you like to name this? This will be announcements. And I can use capital letters and spaces here. I should, because these will be visible by regular people, not just the search engines. So I'm going to have a category where all my announcements will be filed under. So here's the weird part. I hope they change it on the next version. 
plus add new category to write the name, and then add new category to actually create it. So this one just lets you write the name, and this one actually creates it. Don't forget to click the second add new category, the one that's an actual button right there. And now it says, okay, you've categorized this as announcements. We no longer need uncategorized, so turn it off. It's a matter of turning it on and off, organization. This is something a lot of times that WordPress beginners do not do, and everything is set to uncategorized. Therefore, the WordPress doesn't know what your site is about. I mean, therefore, Google doesn't know what your site is about, and therefore you won't get found. Yes? On a different screen, we will be able to edit all of our categories. So we'll do it a little later, and then this will automatically update. We have an option of parent category, which is, let's say, I've got cookies as our, as our top level, our parent category. And then you've got, um, more general, uh, low-fat cookies and real cookies. Right? We can have them in different, in different subcategories. They're both cookies, but I've got that delineation within them. Chocolate chip cookies, well, I don't know, Bavarian chocolate, French chocolate, you know, how much more can you categorize that? You have to think of terms of, uh, let's say, like this, you've got shirts, top level, second level, men's shirts, women's shirts, those both belong to shirts. And even below that, you can have okay, men's shirt, women's shirt, you can have uh, kids shirts, adult shirts, under men's shirts. So parent categories, child categories. Uh, so we might make some of those a little later, but we've got one category at least. So, can you look at the keywords? In a sense, yes. These are sort of going to be keywords that organize your, your site in a, in a way. But specifically, the next one is tags. Those are specific keywords. We'll do those in a moment. But whatever way we categorize things is a sort of way to create a sort of keyword hierarchy that the search engines like. So let's say we have one category. We can also do tags, and these are, these you can be more specific and write many more of them. Um, and these will be the actual keywords that, that define this blog post. Let's say I have a blog post about cookies, and let's say that I have a sponsor, various cooking sponsors, uh, like uh, Calphalon for the, for the uh, pans and uh, Viking for the stove and all of that. So let's say that I've written in my blog post and I've said, yeah, I, I had a great time cooking my cookies in my Viking um, oven. So under tags, I could write those those keywords uh, so I can write specific keywords about what the post is about. Um, I did mention the word cookie in here, so I'll add cookie and then add. And now that's got a keyword a tag of cookie. The point of this later we'll also see is a person, WordPress has a built-in search feature. So a person can go to search and type in Viking and anything in the whole site that has that tag will appear on search results. And also the search engines will analyze your tags and help you with SEO. So it's a good idea to add five or ten tags per post or page to better organize your, 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 your site and get found. So it's up to you to decide what tags work. Uh, cookie, I think, is an important keyword. Um, um, I kind of think that the, that the, say the say the keyword thing is a, is a coupon. You go in there, you get a free cookie if you say cookie. So I'm going to write here on my tag coupon. Think of terms that perhaps visitors to your site might search for. I want to go to the site and I want to find, are there any coupons here? Now they might type the word coupons. I wrote coupon. I believe it's smart enough to find coupon even if a person searches for coupons because it has the C-O-U-P-O-N. You should find it. 
So five to ten tags is good. As for categories, that's up to you to decide, but usually one to three. You want to put things into categories that make sense, and you don't need ten categories. Maybe your site is too complex. If you accidentally create a category, how do you get rid of it? Well, on another screen where we can edit our categories, that's where we can also uh, delete them. So okay. we'll see elsewhere. Same thing with tags. We have another screen dedicated to our tags. That's where we can edit them, delete them, etc. So one to three categories is good and five to ten tags is good. We won't do it just yet, but we can add pictures to our posts or pages. One way is when we're editing the actual post, we can select Add Media and add a picture. We'll see how that works a little later. Or we can also go down here where we've got Set Featured Image. However, with this, this depends on the theme. Some themes will take this picture and show it like a thumbnail next to the post. Some will ignore it. Depends on the theme, on the featured image. If you use the Add Media, however, it will always be visible. It will be visible in your post. So the featured image could, like let's say on this, I've got a table. Let's say I've got a, a thumbnail here, 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 and here next to the post. My featured image could appear there based on my theme. My theme could be set up that it has no use for featured images, so it doesn't show up. You click on the post, and then in the post, that's where the picture will be. So we'll see the difference, but for the moment, I'm ready to publish my first post. So I'll go back to the top and select Publish. I want to see my, my hard work, so up on your the name of your site, select Visit Site. Takes you to the front end, and there's my home page. New Chula location. We're pleased to open our newest location, etc. There's my there's my text. Um, there's the tags. In this particular theme, you will see these little tags appear there. Uh, I don't see any category, but perhaps if you click on click on the title. Because right now we're looking at the home page. If we had 10 blog posts, they'd all be there. But if you click on the title of a blog post... Yes, but that's for the whole site. I want to know what's the category for this post. Okay. So once you click on the post, it then focuses on that one post if I had 10 posts, only that post shows up. And there's my tags again. And look at this. By default, we've got an area for people to leave comments. This is another great feature that comes built into WordPress, people being able to leave comments. I, don't, I can't tell you how many times when I was designing uh, Dreamweaver sites back in the day that people were saying, OK, I want people to leave comments. And back in the day, it was very complicated. Now in WordPress, it's default. If you don't want comments, we'll talk about that. But a person can easily leave a comment. If you click on a tag, this will then show you tag archive coupon. This will show you all posts tagged with coupon. I've only got one, so there's one. But if I have 40 posts that mention or that are tagged coupon, they will all show up here. I've also got a search built in at the top left. Uh, we can search for cookie. I'm going to try cookies. Nothing found. I'm going to try cookie. And then it's not. Mm. OK, so I guess if we, you, if we just type cookie in a person search for cookies, it won't be found. Try something else here, just a moment. Okay. 
it does look like it's um, it's not smart enough to know when someone types cookie to also show cookies. So if you have something that is plural, it may actually behoove you to have cookie and cookies if it's that important for it to be found. So when I went over to visit site, notice I get a, an edit button next to the post so I can easily go back to edit it. I went in and maybe added a couple of extra tags. Don't forget to click update. I'll select add another tag and then at the top remember to select update. So we've done a lot so far. Um, let's take a short break. It's 10.20. We'll take a 10-minute break. we we'll come back at 10.30. We'll look at adding a, a page in contrast. So we'll be back at 10.30.